Hi, I'm Lisa Ling. At 12 years old, my cousin Allie Pierce was diagnosed with liver cancer and she fought the battle valiantly until she ultimately succumbed to the disease. She died when she was only 14 years old. Her death was devastating to our entire family and it made me realize how grossly underfunded childhood cancer is. Childhood cancer kills more kids than all other diseases. Children are diagnosed with cancer every single day. And while there are a number of disparate groups fighting on behalf of children, there is no unified movement. And our hope is that we can gather people in the childhood cancer community and in the general public parents, people who just love children and are confounded that kids could be stricken with cancer. So my hope as the cousin of a girl who lost her life to liver cancer is that you'll watch this video and you will join this movement, The Truth 365. I'm Lisa Ling on behalf of The Truth 365. We could start a revolution against childhood cancer. It's like in a classroom. This is my experience. If we're told to be quiet and one little kid pipes up and starts talking, then another little kid starts pipes up and starts talking and it goes on and on and on until the whole classroom is screaming. So I think we can do that exact thing with raising awareness for childhood cancer. When I was seven years old, I was diagnosed with brain cancer and I didn't think I was gonna make it. I felt broken inside. I didn't react well. I didn't know how to react because I didn't know what was yet to come. It is a scary thing to go through, especially for the first time. It stung a lot and it hurt a lot. And my dad said that my scream sounded like I was getting my head cut off with an ax. I'm not giving up. I have this motto, never back down to cancer. Childhood cancer is the biggest bully out there and you know, we need to stand up to bullies. My biggest dream is to get rid of cancer and become a basketball player. When my mom and dad told me I had cancer, I felt sad, upsetting, and I had to quit soccer, baseball, school. It made my heart stop and when it was stopped, just feel like nothing was happening. Before my surgeries, I'd always have a scary pain in my stomach, feeling like almost a tornado or that I was upside down every single minute. I do get mad and frustrated <laughs> quite a bit just because like, I just want to be done. It's horrible. If you don't say what's on your mind, then all your feelings bottle up inside you and then you just explode eventually. It made you that upset and depressed that it just made you want to cry. My greatest fear is getting cancer again because I honestly don't know how I made it the first time and I don't know if I would make it a second time. And I think that cancer needs to be knocked down a notch and that's what I'm fighting for. If I lose my battle, then you know, I'm, I'm going to want other people to carry on with the war. They're going to win this war. Childhood cancer kills more kids in our country than any other disease, and thousands and thousands of kids are diagnosed every year. A lot of times people say it's rare, but in the big scheme of things, it's really not. There are so many kids diagnosed and so many kids dying every year. During treatment, about 80% of the children experience severe life-threatening or fatal toxicity. 80% severe life-threatening or fatal toxicity. That's really unacceptable. We are dying inside. Like it may not show it on the outside, but we are dying inside. We need to have better, safer treatments for us because a lot of kids with cancer develop problems from their treatment. My treatment is over 30 years old and uh, it's pretty harmful and there should be more modern ones with, that aren't as harmful to me. When I was young, I had cancer and the medicine the doctors gave me to cure the cancer gave me a second type of cancer. When I get chemo, the nurses come in in hazmat suits and gloves and a mask and they can't touch it because it's poison. 
and I have to put it in my body. All of the nasty things that come with chemo is the only thing that we have for these babies to be able to live. I was very puffy in my face and in my belly area and I remember looking down on my body one time and just feeling so sad and so depressed. If the medicines today were more modern than the really old ones, then I might not have had to lose my leg and lose my hair. And it affected my heart, so now I have problems with that, problems with my hearing, and problems with my vision. I had thyroid damage. I had, my, my ovaries were damaged, and that I wouldn't be able to have babies. You know, Jake was treated with five drugs that are, that are older than both of us, you know, older than our parents, and that's just not acceptable. In adult cancer research, about 60% of the drug development funding comes from private industry. But for pediatric cancer researchers, the number is about 0%. There's no profit for drug companies to make drugs because it's not as many kids. So what do we have left? We have left the National Cancer Institute, and we are completely dependent on their budget. The National Cancer Institute, part of the NIH, funds most of the work that takes place in the country with respect to childhood cancer research. Over the past few years, their budget has been shrinking, or effectively shrinking. That puts childhood cancer patients and childhood cancer research at much greater risk. And you really need the national resources of the federal government. And the government has millions and billions of dollars set aside for cancer research, but so little of it is spent on children. It's very little, a fraction. It gets less than 4% of over $5 billion. All childhood cancer. I've never seen a more challenging time for very important research to get funded. We cannot sit here and wait for the next 10 years. In 10 years, more children will die. More of the patients that I treat will die. And I, don't, I cannot take it. The kids are our future. They're our hopes. They're our dreams. They're the future of our society. They're the ones that are going to be making the difference. This is killing our future. This is killing our kids. We need to get these children to adulthood. And it's not happening as much as it should. We are important. We're children. If you had stared into my sister's eyes and seen the sorrow, the fear in them, you would know exactly what I'm talking about. If every kid with cancer in the world spoke up and we all came together and we started a movement, that's what's gonna get more funding. You know, when you hear cancer, it's always an adult. I have breast cancer or this one has prostate cancer. And as much as it, that is scary and it's real, it's also scary and real for little kids. The only difference is, is adults, they have more awareness. They have the breast cancer campaigns. Everybody knows about breast cancer. Not too many people think about childhood cancer because it's not out there as much. We see when the general public is involved and when people take a stance on something, how amazing it is. Look what happened during the 1980s in the early AIDS crisis. You know, the gay community in the United States stood up and said, this is an issue we really care about. And they moved the government. They moved the government to fund AIDS research and they funded scientists who very quickly found a fantastic treatment for AIDS and we can take that model and we can apply it to our kids and we can move the government to support our kids and find better treatments for our kids too. I think that when everybody comes together that that would be great because there are so many brilliant minds out there and they can make something amazing such as a cure to childhood cancer. We have the tools in our hands that will lead us to more effective therapies. But we can't do this alone. You know, this is something that is doable. There's so much that we know, so much science we know. It's not like a impossible dream. It's hard for a child to get their voice out there because, I mean, who's really gonna listen to one little kid? But if we all like get together and help spread awareness, eventually the word will get out there. We need to stand up for kids like my sister and give them the power that they deserve. How can things not change 
they have to change. It's our moral obligation and duty to stand up for those who are voiceless. You know, there's a lot of ways people can make a difference. When my daughter died from childhood cancer, you know, I was left reeling and spinning and not really understanding what had happened. And I wondered why somebody didn't do something. You know, and then I realized that I am somebody. You're not too small to start. Um, you know, start in the smallest place that you can and build up and it, it's worth something. And if we have the opportunity to raise awareness, to, to do some fundraising, to do anything to promote and help children who are either going through treatment, who will go through treatment, who've gone through treatment, that's what we need to do. There's a place for everyone to get involved. You know, if you sit on your couch and complain about things, you're complaining to nobody but your couch. And if we get out into our organizations that are, that are trying to find a cure, volunteer somewhere, give blood. And we can start wearing gold. We can start going to Cure Fest and raising awareness. And we can just do the little things. And then it gets bigger because more people do them, and then more people do them, and then more people do them. Contact your member of Congress. Tell them this is a priority. If you tell them, and if a sufficient number of people tell them this is a priority, they will make it a priority. Through DECA at my high school, we volunteer at CureFest. We rally at the National Cancer Institute. We petition Congress for more funding, and we made a club to help connect children with cancer and the community. Every family, even though there's a lot, doesn't have the resources, doesn't have the time to do this on their own because they've got a child in the sick room and they've got to spend time with them. So all their communities, the public has to get together and do something about this because our families can't. One way to make a difference is sharing this video. You can retweet, like, send it out to all your friends. It doesn't cost anything. It takes a click of a button to share this video and get the awareness that children deserve out there. It's worked before. Um, Gabriella Miller is a perfect example of that. A 10-year-old's dying wish is poised to come true. Gabriella Miller's long and public fight with brain cancer is influencing so many more people than she expected, including in the halls of Capitol Hill. The message is to share, 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 share the awareness. You can reach an enormous amount of people. You can help out in ways you don't imagine. We need mothers, grandmothers, aunts, uncles, teachers, babysitters. We need people out there to join the movement because families should not have to bury their baby because of cancer. It's within our capacity, our ability to change things, so we must. Thank you so much for watching. We hope we've inspired you to join this movement, The Truth 365. To find out more information, just go to the website, thetruth365.org, and we truly, truly hope you will join this movement.